Here on planet Earth, we're searching for intraterrestrials. We're going down, down, down into the darkest depths of the ocean. We hit the bottom and keep going, sinking deep below the ocean floor, through the sediments and into rocks that have lain there for thousands, some millions of years. And we've found life, microbial life. The discovery raises many questions that scientists like Katrina Edwards want to answer. And trying to understand what the, what the um, consequence of having this large biosphere down there is for the Earth system as a whole, trying to understand how life evolves in such remote habitats, and trying to understand what the limits of life are in the deep biosphere. Investigating these questions is one of the central research themes of the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program, or IODP. IODP scientists use the JOIDES resolution to look for answers and have recently started working with the Center for Dark Energy Biosphere Investigations, a new organization providing a forum for researchers interested in the deep earth biosphere. It's comprised of an international team of um, scientists um, from across the U.S. and also from uh, several countries in Europe and in Asia. And we're all uh, banded together really for the study of the life below the bottom of the ocean. Researchers have wanted to study the subsea floor for years, but it was too remote and difficult. Only recently, has technology and technique caught up. There's a confluence of knowledge, of technology, um, of capabilities within the community. Uh, we, we simply weren't here 10 or 15 years ago in terms of our ability to, you know, to manipulate things like we're doing out here with Jason, or our ability to put, in, to put observatories in like we've done with, with the drill ship. And um, the revolution in um, biotechnology and in the ability to do genetic analyses on small amounts of material. This is all relatively new. So yeah, it, it's the best time right now that we've ever had. The Joides Resolution drills a hole into the seafloor. A small observatory, called a cork, is lowered into and seals the hole. Once established, it creates an underwater laboratory. Uh, they're observatories. They allow us to put experiments in the ground um, in different conditions and uh, see how, um, well, conduct different experiments. These corks contain numerous bays for attaching measuring instruments and sampling tools. Later, researchers can return to these sites with other ships, using remotely operated vehicles like Jason or manned submersibles like Alvin. They download the data and collect samples that they can analyze back in their labs. It's been hypothesized that up to one-third of Earth's biomass carbon is uh, locked up in the deep biosphere, and that's only considering sediments. It actually doesn't consider what's, what may be trapped up in, in rocks. Um, and if that's true, and I think there's a lot of us that are still trying to answer that primary question, is that true or is it, a, is it not a valid um, estimation? Um, regardless of, of that, it's, it's important to recognize that that is a living biomass and it's interacting with the world around it and so understanding what the consequence of that is fundamentally important to understanding for example the global carbon cycle. It'd be great if people knew that there was life in the subsurface you know 20 years ago people didn't know what an El, El Nino is now pretty much everyone knows what an El Nino is and so if uh, we could get it so that everyone knows that there's life underneath the seafloor uh, that'd be terrific. What we learn will provide insight into the evolution of ancient life on Earth and perhaps inform ideas of life elsewhere in our solar system. <laughs>